el conflicto palestino-israelí ha provocado un sinfín de efectos psicológicos en ambas poblaciones. Las guerras, los misiles y el terrorismo tienen a los habitantes de la región en una tensión poco sana y poco convencional. En entrevista para Enlace Judío, la doctora Esti Galili, directora de la División de Psicología Infantil del Hospital Adasa en Jerusalén y experta en el tema de estrés postraumático, responde cuáles son los principales efectos psicológicos causados por la guerra y el terrorismo y cuál es el mejor tratamiento para combatirlos. Everybody that experienced the earthquake will have some kinds of emotional reaction to it. And it is normal to have some kind of anxiety connected to it. It's uh, normal to have some difficulty falling asleep. Sometimes our appetite will be low. Uh, sometimes our mood will be somewhat depressed. That is especially, especially if you lost someone in the earthquake or you lost your home or you were injured. But what we would expect is the normal healing process that with time you'll see a diminish in the, in the strength of the symptoms. They will slowly, slowly, if at first you couldn't fall asleep at night, now maybe it takes you half an hour, but you can sleep. And you're realizing that some nights you're sleeping better than others. So if there's a gradual improvement, it means that you're basically recovering from the emotional trauma. And I would expect that most people will recover. And I can notice that even when you're asking me the question and you're mentioning the earthquake, you can talk about it. People that are flooded with emotions can't even say the word. I think the negative uh, psychological side effects for a society that if the government does not improve services as a reaction to the needs after the earthquake, then they lose their trust in the system. And that's a negative outcome because some of the people will need services, whether they're social services, whether they're help in rebuilding their house, whether they have psychological help, whether it's support in the school system, if they get support, then they realize that this, the government and the society cares about them. If they don't look after them, they feel neglected, there's a loss of interest and belief in the collective culture. Not being a soldier, that doesn't, I mean, for sure it affects the people that are in the army. Some people in the army are not necessarily at the front, so I would not talk about that. But the Israeli society is a society in the whole that lives all the time under a shadow of war and terror. And that affects us because we are not surprised when there's another war, we're not surprised by terror effects. Uh, acts, we're almost expecting it to happen from time to time. There are many techniques to treat uh, post-trauma. We think the first responsible step is to recognize who is at risk for developing post-traumatic trauma, who is the weak link, who has previous psychopathology, who was exposed to horrific sites, who lost someone, who doesn't have a support system. And it's important to initiate follow-up for those children and initiate therapy. Also, it is important to recognize that the stronger ones also may develop symptoms, sometimes late onset, and you should be ready to listen to them and help them as needed. When you're helping, the different techniques, some use CBT, some use trauma-focused CBT, some use EMDR, some use somatic experiencing, some using narrative buildup, some use the traditional things of family intervention, nonverbal therapy, It's important that in the clinic there are different models of therapy that people know how to use and they imply the appropriate therapy 
to the right child and the right family. And if it's working, continue, and if not, to change to a better model of therapy. I don't, that's a bit uh, presumptuous. Uh, I don't know about the rest of the world, but I think we have had experience with it always. And I believe we took it seriously from the late 70s. And certainly at the, at the 2000, we really developed a lot of clinics that have experience and have refined the expertise of treating post-trauma. So I do think that we have a lot of knowledge, but I'm not sure that it doesn't exist. I'm sure there are many excellent clinicians and very experienced in Mexico, the excellent ones in different places of the world. I think what's important is that we exchange our experience and benefit from it. The psyche, the human psyche, deals better with natural May disasters, and the rate of developing post-traumatic stress disorder is significantly lower than by man-made trauma. About earthquakes, we're talking over 10%, 10 to 15%, and in terror trauma, we're talking well over 30%. So basically, the psyche is more negatively affected by terror for many, many reasons. We, they don't talk about that. Uh, you have to realize what is the reality in Gaza and in the West Bank. They don't necessarily feel free to criticize their government. And the fact that they already took on themselves to cooperate with Israel is already risk, a risk. I think the reality of the life for children in Gaza is very, very difficult. Um, I think blaming this or that is not the point. The point is trying to support the people that provide mental, mental health to the children in Gaza. I think I know the Israeli reality obviously better than the Palestinian. And I think there are two things. One, the governmental support to the Palestinian is at this point much weaker than the Israeli. The availability of services is more limited and poverty is a very a big dominator in the West Bank and in Gaza. So it seems that they are not doing well. It seems that in situations like that, and that happens all over the world, it's very easy to persuade people to lose hope and to become aggressive to others. Uh, as individuals, I don't think we, di we differ. We're all the same. So if you're looking at one case, it might be the same. But I think the life circumstances in the West Bank and Gaza is worse than in Israel. I'm very enthusiastic by that uh, breakthrough. There hasn't been a lot of experience with youngsters because we're always more cautious. But I think opening new opportunities of treatment and not just the old same is a good idea. So we're hopeful and any new improvement in therapy is very welcome.